I'm your host, as always, Headphones Deal, bringing you a full with an extra episode review for this week's episode of the podcast. So I have quite a bit of stuff that I had a chance to watch and um, review and all of that usual stuff. So with that, I'm going to jump right into it. Um, I don't know that it's going to be any longer or shorter than any other episode, but there are a lot of different things that I had a chance to watch and play this week. So with that being said, I'm going to start it off with the usual um, Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power. So I did have a chance to watch episodes five and six. Um, so both episodes for me are continuing to make the season that much more better. I'm enjoying all of it. The creation of the rings, the interaction between Calabrimbor and Sauron all the back end stuff that's going on so like we have Galadriel meeting with the orc or the uruk um we have the elves um the son um maintaining caution and prudence while his father the king is falling into the greed to fall to kind of not i want to say redcon but not in the negative sense more of like to fill in that space of how to fill in that information of how the um elves got greedy with their money and all of that stuff so all of that's just falling into place is working um i kind of do want more with the stranger and the hobbits and you know becoming Sa um gandalf but they're not entirely ignoring all of that stuff as well so you do see how or you do get to see a lot more of why gandalf has that relationship with the um hobbits that he does in lord of the rings and um hobbit for that matter but you also we're also starting to get to see how he became a wizard um by the time of lord of the rings so overall this good stuff i definitely recommend it season two is um worth the watch and i can't get enough of it um so with that being said i also had a chance to watch the um original mad max films the ones with um mel gibson so mel, uh, mad max mad max um the road warrior and beyond thunderdome and um for me the first film was not all that great um you got you basically have the whole premise of the film in the in the last like 20 or 30 minutes which in the grand scheme of the film because it's only like 90 minutes long isn't as much of the um film as you would think so the last third of the film but in the scope of it you also have only 90 minutes and he only does all the stuff he wants to do in the last 20 to 30 minutes so for me it was okay um if you wanted to watch the films i would probably say start with the second one um, and then make the first one kind of a backstory maybe to as a prequel to the second one but I mean if you watch it in order the progression's fine it's just that the first one doesn't really hold up as well as the second and third one um, for me the, the second and third one are actually equally good um, Road Warrior sets him up as that mercenary and um, um, as a road warrior traveling and all that, but we also get introduced to more gangs, Gas Town. Um, I forget the main villain's name, but I thought he was particularly good. And they basically improve that um, when you get into um, Beyond Thunderdome, just because um, Master Blaster was. Um, actually, I had never seen any of the Mad Max films, so. For me, um, learning well, who Master Blaster was was definitely a um, revelation. He reminded me of, um, I think his name is Kang or something like that from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles franchise. Um, and so the whole first half of, of the film was really good. And then I was kind of hoping when I was watching the second half that that um, lady who finds Max in the desert would have been the 
Um, I think she was a feral girl from the second film, so I was kind of hoping they would have made that connection between the two films. But I don't think that was the case. So, but it's neither here nor there, there nor there. It doesn't take away from the film. Um, the second half of the film um, essentially just sets him up as that mercenary and sent, takes him back to the um, to the city. So, um, not too bad of films. And then when you get into um, as far as Fury Road and Furiosa go, you see how much to the they kept to the original source films and essentially just improve the visuals. Like that's all they really did. The stories were essentially equally as good. Um, you have, you know, the Citadel and Gas Town and Bullet Town and all of that in Furiosa. The Citadel in the first one only with um, Immortan Joe. And all of the characters basically just fit in with the original film. So you're not changing up too much from, from that original formula. So as far as the Mad Max universe goes, um, it is all really fun and enjoyable to watch. So for completionist sake, I would say watch all three Mad Max films. Um, but I will say the first one is the least of the films. So if you watch that one first and you're like you're supposed to, I guess you would get it out of the way. And then the second and third films are the more enjoyable ones. Um, so that's all there is for that. Um, as far as gameplay goes, or actually before I get into the gameplay, I did want to mention that I did have a chance to visit um, Knott's Berry Farm this week as the monthly check-in. They started and just about put up most of their um, Halloween decorations. So um, if you have a chance to go or you go for Knott's Berry Farm, they're all pretty much up. So the you, most of the park is pretty much as expected, not too much changing from year to year. The entrance has some new, dark, um, bigger, like, um, death personification statue. So I like, I thought that was of good note. And then they have some good wireframe, um, statues in Camp Snoopy, which are nice. Everything else is pretty much the same. You have the, like in Fiesta Village, you have the cigar guy and the skeleton lady in purple and all of that. They move some of them around, so they mix it up a little bit there, but... As far as Fiesta Village and Ghost Town goes, um, nothing too different or major or crazy going on there. Um, granted, Ghost Town is not too hard to, um, to convert into go into um, Halloween version, so um, there's that. But um, overall, good decorations worth looking at and checking out, even if you go for just a few hours. So um, I'll have a link in the show notes to the blog post with the photos that I took. So. You have that to watch. I uh, didn't take any videos this time. Uh, nothing particularly stood out, but um, I still had a chance to get a few good pictures in, so definitely worth checking out there. Um, and then as far as gameplay goes, um, still no progress on the Roller Coaster Tycoon Classic front, but I got to thinking that I would give Roller Coaster Tycoon Touch a go again and I really couldn't get into it because I had my existing park from a while back and I thought well you know what let me start over and the um, tutorial really got to me the pop-ups were super annoying so I got to thinking was there is there any other good roller coaster um, style game whether it's roller coaster tycoon style or just a whole new take on it and I found a game called real coaster um, it kind of goes by the subtitle of Idol Tycoon, uh, Idol Coaster Tycoon as well, or something like that. But that's not really the um, thing that's of note. But the thing that st makes it stand out over Roller Coaster Tycoon Touch is that while the tutorial in the beginning is there, it's not quite as bad. It kind of gets out of your way and it's not quite as overbearing. But when you're building the park, one of the things you notice is that you have more customizable uh, options so you can upgrade your parking lot and your um toll booth or your ticket booth so you not only can do you can you add more booths but you can upgrade how many people are able to get through the ticket counter um how many people you can park how or how many people can park in your parking lot and upgrade the efficiency there and cost same thing with your ride so you start with a basic ferris wheel and then as you um, earn more money you can upgrade it and also do things like upgrade the queue and um, various other things of efficiency and all that. So as you expand your, or as you get more money and expand your park, you can do more and more things. But that's not all, that's not where it stops as far as where I've gotten to so far. The thing that stands out for me though is that in the game you can also ride your coasters and ride your various rides that are in the park. 
So if you build a Ferris wheel, you go around the Ferris wheel. If you build a roller coaster, you can ride the roller coaster. Um, same thing with like the pirate swing or the launch coaster that goes up and down and things like that. Like you can ride all of those various rides. You can even enter the park as a guest and it'll t you can, it'll walk, your guest as you will walk around the park on autopilot. So you can see your park from a, a ground level view as if you were a tur tourist. So, so far Real Coaster seems like it's the standout game over Roller Coaster Tycoon Classic. So I've had a chance to play it for a little while and get used to the ads to get more money and things like that. So that's okay as far as watching the ads and things like that. It's probably maybe 30 seconds or a minute worth of ads to uh, get more money from the helicopter and kind of speed things up. So in the next gameplay, whenever I have a chance, I haven't decided on my schedule of how I'm going to play the game, but um, I got to thinking that maybe I'm going to make this the gameplay that every week instead of Roller Coaster or Tycoon, I'll play a little bit of this to upgrade the park and rides and things like that and play the game and um, kind of get through the game to see how far it goes before either I get bored or if I can, can get fully into it and uh, where I can take the park to grow it out and that sort of things. So in the show notes for the episode, I'll have a link to the first gameplay video that I did. Um, it will have those ads that are in the game in order for me to get more money. So that's a little bit of heads up there that they're not actually my ads. They are the ads that are from the game. So um, if you don't like them or anything like that, that's kind of a game issue or a game thing versus me. But you get an idea of what kind of the ads those are in the game. Um, we'll see if I keep doing that though as well. I mean, if I get to a point where I'm making enough money for the park, then I will not spend as much time um, getting the, or using those ads or anything like that. So um, with that being said, I also had a chance to progress into playing uh, more of Pirate Doom. So I finished the third episode and um, overall, so far, it's continuing to be a good mod. It's continuing on the pirate theme. Not too much um, difference as far as um, the first um, pirate doom game or anything like that so if you like the first game then the second game is going to be just as good so um, all the gameplay videos are up on the youtube channel um, I did put up the long play of the third episode as well so it's a couple hours long if you want to watch it all at once without too much of the episode titles or anything like that they're in the game videos as well but not in the show notes I haven't had a chance to go in and um, do any of that um, but as far as the game goes, I'm having fun. So I'm in the final like 10 episodes or 10 levels or whatever to finish that game as well. Um, and as I record this, I did get a notification that there's going to be a new Doom mod out called Doom 3 or The Doom 3. I'm not quite sure because it depends on if you look at the video or the video. Um, the um, name that's in the video but I guess it's a Doom 2 mod that creates a Doom 3 like a um, a concept video of Doom 3 I'm gonna assume that all the different that's gonna be a full megawatt of 30 levels or whatever um, but I guess is what Doom 3 should have been versus the Doom 3 that actually got released so a lot of the levels look very advanced and detailed as far as the graphics go but it's built on Doom 2 um, it does look like it requires GZ Doom 4.12.0 or newer. Um, but that's coming out, it looks like, on October 10th. So I should have um, Pirate Doom 2 um, done by then. I'm, I'm going to hope in the next like, week or two. So by the time that comes out, I'll be ready to play that. I was going to play another Doom mod, but I think this one looks more interesting and... Um, a little bit more advanced on the filters or something like that or, or whatever based on the um based on that preview video so i'm gonna probably check that one out i'm gonna do a little bit more research because i am seeing that video as i'm recording this episode of the podcast so um but that's you know, um, a few weeks into the future i'm still i still got pirate doom 2 to finish so all those videos are going up um, as I play them and get them uploaded and all that usual stuff. But that is all for this particular episode of the podcast. So if you want to get in touch with me, check out past episodes and all of that good stuff. The website is headphonesneal.reviews. 
Uh, it has links to the show, social media sites I'm on and all that good stuff. And you get regular updates of what I'm up to posting and all that stuff. Um, you can check out the Patreon at patreon.com slash pateln01 for an ad-free version of the episode, early access to it, um, the video, a link to the video version of the podcast as well. So if you want to get that early or you prefer to watch it there, you can get access to that as well. Um, but that is all for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in and until next time.